And it's a chance for me to introduce our speakers this evening. And we have Stefan Vincenzo, our Sergeant at Arms, and also our an officer in our club, and he's made some dramatic progress. He will be presenting from the Pathways Motivational Strategies, and he'll be announcing the March 26th Creative Writing Workshop. And you're all on pins and needles. What is a creative workshop on March 26th? The purpose what? of this project is to practice the skills needed to build a cohesive team and host an event. Stefan invites his fellow Carol Woodians to attend the creative working work, creative writing workshop, which he will be hosting on Saturday, March 26th from 12.30 to 2 p.m. right here at the Jimmy B. Keel Library Meeting Room D. Just so happens we're in Meeting Room D. Stefan intends to inspire us as we discover new creative speech ideas through the use of Mad Libs and a story game. He's even planning to divide us into teams but I'm not sure if he's going to be presenting the winning team with a trophy. And I know for me, it's always been about the bling. Please welcome Stefan as he tells us about the March 26th Creative Writing Workshop. Like to host the Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, today I am Dr. Writing, and I'm going to train you to be a better creative writer. And I will call someone to be my patient and show you how this is done. If you can, Mr. John, please, please come up on the table and be my patient. All right. You want me to lie down on the table? Oh, no, you can go. No need to lie down. Just, uh, just sit up. All right. Okay, I'm going to listen to your, to your lungs. Okay, breathe in and out. In and out and talk. <coughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That I think I have the diagnosis now. You're diagnosed with writer's block. <laughs> <laughs> and I have a treatment for you. I'm gonna prescribe for you. Creative Writing Clinic on March 26th. Oh, good. How do you feel? I can hardly wait to. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine. Get this. Imagine. It's going to be clearing your mind is the first thing we're going to do. And then we're going to decide one item that you want to speak about and talk about in your community. At some point, we're gonna bring in some Mad Libs, which if you don't know what it is, it's a fun creative game for you to join your friends and pick words and figure out a new story. And then we'll do creative storytelling just think of the different examples you can do. You can tell people about, we had some great speeches like the weight gain clinic that was done in the past, as well as the kid who couldn't get enough ice cream. We could also talk about a stories of friendship, compassion, celebrating, those unsung heroes of the community. And we can also talk about how we can support collaborative growth in Toastmasters through speech craft. In conclusion, I'm looking for brave young men and women who want to get to be better speakers and you're gonna have an opportunity to provide me with formal feedback on my leadership and my creative guidance and help me to be a, become a better leader and speaker and help you to be a more creative speaker. Madam, Mr. Toastmaster. Stefan, let me first say, 
that speech was Dane creative. And that sets you apart from the crowd. That's why I like it a lot. He really took some time to develop the idea, it seemed, of the doctor and then the patient room and then the demonstration. You got the audience involved. I really did enjoy that. It really kept me alert, kept me interested in what you were saying. I like that flow. I also liked how you did the whole skit and then you tied the skit back into what you were basically trying to sell to us, the workshop. And I enjoyed that too. That was very good, very clever. Some things I would like to say that maybe we could work on next time is you paused after you first grabbed the paper when you came and you looked at it. And that was like a blatant obvious pause for an audience member. Yeah, I think it could be smoothed up pretty easily. And then for some of the video, I don't know how John was feeling, but it seemed like you kind of left them up here while you were talking. And like, without giving him a direction, like, do I sit here? I don't know if you did, I wasn't watching that closely, but he looked a little lost. And maybe it wasn't as comfortable, I don't know. But just communication with your volunteer, I feel like would be helpful. And also, when you were, had your paper here, right? we were looking at it, and you were reading these, these things about your workshop, like some of the examples. And if you're passionate about this workshop, you want people to come, it should all be up here. You shouldn't need to like be reading like every couple of seconds. If, it's, if you're passionate, you love it. You know what's on that workshop. You know what's going to happen. You just got to express it to all of us. I feel like uh, reading it just takes away the value that maybe uh, it looks like you put into it. If, if you are really passionate about it, I think it would help if you showed everyone else passionate about it. All right. And then the last thing I got for you, to make it even pop more, which I do, like I said, it's creative. I love that. You had the table here. You had a John the patient. And you did the whole speech behind the table right here. And in my experience, just from things I've seen, whenever you put a barrier in front of any person, to another person. It's a barrier, not only communication, but it's like, it's in your mind. It's like, are we not that close where we can be chest to chest? So hiding, or like, that's why I don't stand behind here, but behind any sort of thing, if you don't have to for any period of time, I recommend like showing people your chest. Like you can trust me. There's nothing blocking us. I think that would help a lot with your already excellent speech. That's all I got for you, Stefan. Good work. You're improving every time. <laughs>